Hello, beautiful people. Amy Nicholas coming at you live. And I am streaming on a new device. Hey, new phone. <laughs> My other phone's camera was messed up, so I wasn't able to do lives from that for a long time. I'm just trying to figure out. <laughs> There's my little kickstand. There we go. Eh, yeah, it's all right. So I'm in my office slash library, and I thought I would um, make this sort of a fun live to share with you because I've done this process multiple times, and that is manifesting what I want. <laughs> so we talk about, you know, manifesting your desires, manifesting more money, success in your business, uh, bringing to you what you really desire in your life. Could be cars, could be homes, could be vacations, could be a spouse. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I thought, let me share the process with you and um, just sort of share with you what I'm doing. Because to me, I already have the new motorcycle. And I'll give you a little backstory on how I've gotten other bikes. Um, but I thought, why not just share with you, you know, what's going on, what I'm thinking about, what I'm doing. And to give you the backstory, um, 2008, I think it was July cause it was really hot. I was living in Texas. Friend of mine convinced me, coworker friend to take a motorcycle class. And I saw her going out on the weekends and, and she was like having a good time. She's like, man, you know, I wish you, you rode and um, it would be fun to ride together. So she convinced me to take the class. I signed up, took the class in July in Texas. <laughs> it's very hot, but it was fun and I'm glad I did it. It really opened my eyes to something new that was exciting and fun. I didn't know how I was going to get a bike. Um, I was renting, living with a friend, didn't really have, um, the ability to like, excuse me, transport bikes around, you know, and I was new, so I didn't want to ride the streets yet. I wanted to like find parking lots and such. So I told myself, well, let me pay off my truck. And so I, <laughs> that took a little bit of time, a couple years. And then, um, you know, I was moving around a lot and it just wasn't logistically possible really um, to have a motorcycle at that time, I really didn't have my own space. So fast forward to last year, 2020, <laughs> and this is January, we have moved to our new home, my dream home manifested. And we have land, we have space. <laughs> and we had, um, at the time we have a carport, but at the time it was open. Um, so you can park your vehicles under there and all that. We've since screened it in, but, uh, at any rate, I had space to park a motorcycle. <laughs> so I started looking and what I did was I actually pulled out, let me see if I can reach it. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> um, this guy, it's hard to read. <laughs> it's a binder. It says my dream book. I wrote this down in my dream book. Okay. You can use a spiral notebook. You can put it in a binder like I did. I like having the little loose leaf paper inside. Um, I think I've got it right here, actually. Um, let's see when I actually wrote this down. Okay, so some point in 2019, I wrote this down. <laughs> uh, and, and here's the key, right? All those years that I was trying to manifest my first motorcycle, I really wasn't trying because I kept telling myself, well, let me get space for it. Let me get um, my own thing, you know, and, and let me figure things out. But in 2019, I wrote down that I had a Kawasaki Ninja 650R in lime green and black. Uh, at the time, I thought I was going to get chrome wheels because I thought I was going to keep it for a while. But at any rate, achieved. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. January 17th, 2020, first bike. So almost a year later, which was fine because to me, the timing was perfect to get that first bike. Um, got a decent price on it. It wasn't great, but I didn't care because it was my first bike. So I kept that bike for about four months and I would watch YouTube videos and I would um, 
just see all these different bikes out there. I already knew because when I lived in Texas and going back to the 2008, when I took the motorcycle class, I already knew that I wanted a sport bike. And the bike that I, the, my first bike was more of a, what they call like a sport touring. It looks sporty, but you're sitting upright. So, and it wasn't very fast. Like it was decently powered for like highway or something, but it wasn't fast at all. So <laughs> I wanted something with some pep. And so I'd already thought years back of having um, a Suzuki GSXR 600. And so I started planning probably about April of last year that I was going to get another bike. I was going to sell my beginner bike, get another bike. And what I did was <sighs> obsessively looking on Facebook marketplace. <laughs> that was my thing. And lo and behold, two months later, I manifested that 600 sold the other one, got the faster bike and I've had that bike since I still have that one. Um, it was, it's an older bike, 2007. So I was putting a lot of work into it, getting it running, right. Fixing things. And so I kind of was like, you know what? I'm gonna start looking for a different bike. And I walked into a dealership one day <laughs> just because they had a Suzuki GSXR 750, which is like the next level up if you want a little bit more pep in your step. Um, and I did not know it at the time. I was going to look. Ended up walking out of the dealership having bought a 2021 motorcycle. Um, still have that one. So right now I've got two bikes and I also have a dirt bike. That was a whole other story manifesting. Um, but at any rate, the process has stayed the same. And so I'm going to put into use and share with you how this works and how you get what you want. And you don't have to worry about the money. You don't have to worry about where it's going to come from. You don't have to worry about how. So I encourage you, you know, take, from what I'm sharing with you, take this information and use it to manifest what you want in your life. You might not want a motorcycle. I don't know too many women that do, honestly. Um, it's actually very challenging to find women to ride with uh, where I live. But there are a lot of bikers around here in Florida. So take this advice and use it for what you want. You want more money? Money's great. You know, and I know that it takes money to buy things. So the money to me is kind of like, um, it's kind of secondary because really you want the things that the money buys, right? It's not so much that you want pieces of paper. It's fun. It's great to look at, whatever. But that's not what you really want. And you get clear on that. And that's one of the things. So here's here's how I'm doing this. Here's how I'm doing this process. We're, we're going for, well, if you count the dirt bike, so one, two, three, four. We're going for bike number five here. Um to manifest. Now my my intention is to sell the 2007 bike. Keep the 2021, add another bike to the mix. That way I have two newer bikes rather than a brand new one and a much older one. <laughs> uh, because I just I love the peace of mind that comes with having a newer bike with very low miles. So here I am being specific, okay? Let me give you my specifics. I already know exactly what bike I want. Number one, know what you want. Uh, it's a Kawasaki Ninja ZX 14R. This bike is like the king of bikes. I mean, if you like power, <laughs> this is the bike. Um, Am I a little hellion speed demon? No, actually, I sat on this bike. This is step number two. Get close to what you want. I sat on this bike uh, almost two weeks ago. And I had sat on this bike before I wanted it just to see what it felt like. I was at a dealership in Virginia visiting my family. And I sat on this bike. But I, I really couldn't remember what it was like. So I said, Amy, you got to get close to what you want, right? You got to experience it. So I went to this dealership because I seen on Facebook marketplace that they had the bike I wanted for sale. It wasn't in the color I wanted. 
here again, being specific. Um, I told myself I wanted the emerald green color. And I've since opened that um, option up to blue and orange. Those are a couple of the colors this bike comes in. And the bike at the dealership was gray. It was actually a lot nicer looking in person than I thought. So I was like, all right, this is a cool bike. I sat on it. The guy had the keys for it. It had gas in the tank. He, he started it up. And I was like, oh my gosh, like it made me want the exhaust that was on that bike. So I got more clear about my picture. Um, hey, Kelly, thanks. Really good camera quality. Yeah, this is my new iPhone. Well, replaced my iPhone. New. <laughs> my camera was bad on my other one, so I was always having to use my webcam. But yeah, I like the quality too. Um, so talking motorcycles. <laughs> uh, yeah, so two weeks ago, sat on this bike and decided I was going to start actively looking for this new bike. And I started to get a little bit more clear based on doing research, based on jumping into some Facebook groups, learning about the bike, looking for bikes for sale. There were some people posting in the groups, and I also looked on Marketplace. And I started sort of collecting data, you know. What are the known issues with this bike? What kind of maintenance do you have to do? Um, what should I be on the lookout for? You know, have people drag race this bike? Here's, the, here's how to know. <laughs> uh, things like that. So I started to learn more. And I think that's a key component, like knowing what you want and getting clear about it, experiencing, getting close to what you want. If it's a physical item, obviously this is a lot easier. If it's something more intangible, like you want to quit your job, that's a little harder. However, do the things that you can do today, <clears throat> excuse me, that make it feel like you have the thing that you want, the event the manifestation, the material thing, do the things that you can today that brings you as close as possible to that outcome. <coughs> Excuse me. So as I'm working on this manifestation, again, I'm not worried about the time. I don't, I mean, if it takes months, whatever, I don't care. That's not the point. When you don't worry about the time, Things come to you a lot faster. Do I want this new bike like today? Yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, <clears throat> do I need it today? No. <laughs> Would I be happy if it came today? Sure. But I don't need it. Want it, but don't need it. That is another key component to manifesting what you want. Too many people get like obsessed with what they want to the point of their obsession kills it. They say be obsessed. Yes, you should be obsessed with what you want. But don't get yourself to a point where you feel like things are just falling apart if you don't have that. I could take it or leave it. Like, it would be cool as heck if I you know, like, walked into a dealership today and just like outright bought a bike. Cool. Do I need to do that? No. It's a lot easier to manifest what you want when it's not forced. Like the last time I got my bike, <laughs> I walked into a dealership not even knowing I was there to buy a bike. Okay. I sat on it, started it up. I was sold. You know what I mean? Like it was done. Did I walk in there like, oh my gosh, I gotta find the perfect bike? No. Peace, calm, assuredness. Got what I want. Didn't know I was going to get it <laughs> that day. Um, but here we are again, you know? And some people would say, okay, well, Amy, how, how are you going to get the money? Um, you know, do you have to, you said you want to sell one of your bikes, but, you know, so you got to worry, you got you to like picture, you know, selling the bike and then, and then like getting the money and then gathering more money. For me, the thing that works the best is to focus on the end result. Not all the little steps along the way that you think have to happen, okay? Here's what I thought would have had to happen with the last bike I bought. And by the way, this was in May this year. Um, I, had I logically thought this out, I would have said, okay, Amy, 
you know, your, your older bike is in the shop right now. You're going to have to wait for the bike to get out of the shop. Then you're going to have to sell it. Then you're going to have to get the money and then you're going to have to go buy the new bike. And that wasn't the way it played out at all. I didn't even have the other bike in my possession when I bought the new one. I was still in the shop. So <laughs> what you think should fall, should happen, what you, what you think the steps are, are usually not the steps. And that is okay. You want the universe to bring you what you desire in the most efficient, easiest, peaceful, flowing way. Because that is just the best way things happen. So don't force things to happen a certain way. You want success in your business and you think it's got to come from this product or, or this thing that you're doing. Don't worry about that. Just picture the end result. With the bike, I am not focused on how am I going to sell the bike? What am I going to get for this bike? How am I going to get the, the money I need to buy another one? I, when I get any of those thoughts come up, by the way, I just push that aside in my brain, a little swipe, and I put the image of the new bike parked in my carport next to my other new bike and that's what I focus on because that's the end result for me to have the two new bikes <laughs> do I want them yes do I need them no is it bad to desire things that don't seem practical absolutely not and why is that well when I got the truck I have it's a 2014 Dodge Ram. It's not your typical Ram. It is lifted six inches. It's got the, what they call bulldog stance, kind of like this. It's got huge rims and tires on it. It's got lights in the wheels, so it lights up at night. It is blacked out, as blacked out can be. <laughs> it's got a stereo system. I mean, this was my dream truck. And when I first bought it, and I used all these techniques I'm sharing with you. When I first bought it, I thought to myself, you know what? This is going to change me as a person, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur. Yes, it is a physical item. It is a materialistic thing. But it is causing something in me to shift. Because all of a sudden, I felt like I was stepping into a new identity. Not just because I drove a certain kind of vehicle, but because it was pushing me to become better than where I was. I remember working in my office. This is my other home I used to have. And I would look out the window because I had this big window in front of uh, my computer, my desktop monitor. I would look out the window and I would see the truck parked in the driveway. And I would just like, mm, I love that truck, you know? And it would motivate me. I was like, all right, back to work. You know, I got this. The sales are coming in today. I might have made zero dollars so far. I don't care. I'm back to work. It like pushed me to become somebody different. Motivated, excited. I started getting new ideas. I started changing the things I was doing in my businesses. Doors started opening. Money started coming in. That truck was paid for within four months paid for yeah I didn't know that was gonna happen either didn't know how <laughs> didn't have any plans to uh, I, I it wasn't something I thought about manifesting to have my truck paid for in four months and it wasn't a cheap truck by the way <laughs> um, but anyway so you can watch me. I'm going to do some videos here and there throughout this process. Um, not every time I go live, but I'll keep you posted on how the manifestation is going. Um, to me, and this is how you know it's coming fast. To me, it's like I can convince myself to the point of I can walk outside into my carport. We don't have like an actual garage, but it's screened in. And we have like a sliding screen door. And I can see 
the new bike parked there. Like literally, I kid you not, I was walking inside there the other day from outside and I did a double take. Because for a second, I, I saw the bike. I saw it parked there, the new one. I saw it. I was like, dang, this is the key, by the way. When you can literally convince yourself, <laughs> like trick your brain, that what you want has already happened. It's already done. Don't think about things coming. Don't think about things as if they're far off or, or even saying tomorrow. It's already done. Even like I used to say um, things that, you know, certain things would happen in the day. And it, it kind of works sometimes. But if things that you say today is this, today is this is happening. And it's not working for you. Act as if it's already done. Put yourself in the position of, okay, like for me, my motorcycle is already here. I've, I've already got it. Like I've got two brand new bikes now, okay? It's already done. It's got everything I want on it. The right exhaust, everything's done to it, lowered, whatever. What would I be doing? What would I be feeling? What would I be thinking? Well, I, like sometimes I just look at it. <laughs> We've got security cameras. I can just see it on the camera. Oh, there's my bike. Yeah. Think about, hmm, where do I want to go ride this weekend on my new bike? Like picturing it, you know, oh, it's so comfortable. It's, it's a bigger bike. It's just, it's like good for touring. Where am I going to go? Planning that. Ah, oh, well, it's a good hour to the beach. Maybe I'll ride at the beach. You know, go, go chill at the beach for a while. Hit the waves. Get back on the bike. Have a nice, comfortable ride back. Easy peasy. And you just sort of immerse yourself into these visions, into this different reality. And it becomes reality. This is how I've gotten my other four bikes. I saw myself. I, I saw myself like when the one bike was in the shop, my 07. When that bike was in the shop, it seemed like never ending. Like it was in the shop for a long time. I was like, what do I gotta, what do I gotta think about? What do I gotta picture? What do I have to do differently to bring the bike home? <laughs> it just seemed like problem after problem after problem. And I said, well, what do I really, really want? I want that assuredness, that peace, that feeling that it's done that it's in my possession, the bike is sitting outside, it is done. And I had an image come into my mind. I said, okay, I'm picturing, like staring at where we park our bikes and there's, there's the bike I'm waiting to get out of the shop. It's parked there. I could see it. And I'd look on the camera in my mind and I could see it on our security camera. And I kid you not, that freaking bike was done within four days of that. When I got clear on the picture, when I when I pictured, what is it I really want? Yeah, I, I love to ride the bike. It's, it's, it's amazing, I love riding. But there was this, this internal feeling that was of unrest, disorderly, you know? I said, I, I want to feel peaceful. That's the thing, I want to feel peaceful, knowing that it's back and it came. And it was done. So sometimes you have to get clear on not only what you want, but what's the real feeling that you want from the thing you want? Because a lot of times we think, well, you know, I want this car. I want this house. And you come up with like surface reasons. Oh, well, we'll have more space. And um, yeah, it'll just be like comfortable and, you know, the family can come and, uh, you know, the new car be reliable and, you know, won't break down on me. You're getting closer by asking yourself, you know, why you really want something. But you have to go deeper. A lot of times you have to go deeper. If, if stuff seems to be eluding you, 
you're not getting what you want. You're thinking about it all day long. You're like, Amy, I'm thinking about the dream house. I'm thinking about the, the, the new car. It's not coming. You got to stop focusing on it's not coming, first of all. Second of all, realize that you're probably thinking about the wrong feeling. The feeling is everything. There's a book called The Feeling is the Secret by Neville Goddard. You can just read the title and it, it tells you exactly what you need to know. The feeling is the secret. When you capture that actual feeling that you want, and I swear the last, there's, there's been a lot of manifestations that I've consciously thought about and, and watched as they happen. And in recent times, like within the last few months and, and last year or two, and I realized that what I really wanted out of all these things that I thought I wanted, you know, this bike, this car, this house, this dog, whatever it was, you know, I was trying to manifest. I wanted to be at peace. When I got my dream home, which I'm sitting here in my office right now in our dream home, the thing that put the pieces together that really solidified this happening for me was one image of looking out the back of our property, seeing the trees, seeing there's no houses behind us, by the way, can't see anybody's house, just land back there. And that image gave me this sense of peace. Like when I get this house, ah, oh, the peace, I just, I feel at peace. You know, it's quiet. We're in the country. The neighbors are not super close to us. They're, they're on the sides of us, but they're not super close. And looking out of the back, there's, there's nobody, you know. And that was the feeling and the image that I focused on. And so since then, I've sort of looked at the different manifestations that have happened and thought, well, what am I really after? What do I really want? I want to feel peaceful a lot of times. Sometimes I'm going for a slightly different feeling, but a lot of the times I just want to feel at peace. And I think the thing that brings the stuff to you is that when you're at peace, you can tell yourself it is done and you believe it because when you feel peaceful, you do have that sense like, yeah, it's done. I don't have to worry about this anymore. I don't have to focus on it anymore. I don't have to think about it and visualize it and like go over and over in my mind. It's already done. So as I said earlier about this, is I'm walking out to our carport out front here and I'm, I'm already seeing the bike there, the new one. It's already there. I see the color I want. I see the bike parked next to my other bike. I'm thinking about the rides I'm going to go on, where I'm going to take it, get some pictures of it, take it somewhere scenic, get some nice shots of it, post it here. I'm thinking about like sharing with y'all, you know, here's the new bike. I told you I was going to get it. It's already done. That's where you have to be. And if you get caught up in the how, <laughs> how am I going to get this? <laughs> Where's the money going to come from? <laughs> Don't worry about it. The only thing you have to focus on is, do you want it? Yes. Okay. Then focus on the feeling that you're going to have when you have it. Right? So if you enjoy this kind of stuff and you're like, you know, Amy's kind of, you know, she's manifesting some things. She's, she's getting what she wants out of life. She looks like she's having a good time. She's at peace. <laughs> then, you know, I invite you, giving you a chance here to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I'm working with people, four clients who I'm looking for, four people. Uh, if you want to break your income ceiling in the next 90 days, sign up below. This is for people that are ready to take some action. They're ready for the next step. They're tired of being in the same place. I don't know about you, but if I make the same income month after month after month, 
I feel stuck. I feel like I'm not growing. I feel like I'm dying. And it's frustrating because you want to be somewhere else. And if you just feel like you're stuck the same level in your online business, you know, month after month, and maybe you're going backwards, that's even worse. But you want to know, how do I push past this, this invisible ceiling? It's not really there, but there's something up here that's blocking me. There's something I'm not doing. There's something I'm doing wrong. Hello, beautiful people. It's Amy Nicholas back again, giving you a little update. We started something new last live stream about me manifesting a new motorcycle. So I was going to keep you updated with progression on that and whatnot, and just kind of give you some insight as I study what happens around me, my thoughts, what I'm thinking about, what I'm feeling, and how, you know, events are playing out. So... I found the bike that I want to buy <laughs> and it is like a really good price compared to what the bike market is doing right now. Hey, what's up, Roger? Um, compared to what the bike market is doing right now, bikes are like ridiculously priced because after COVID people were like jumping on motorcycles like crazy. Like I need to get away. I need uh, freedom. I need peace of mind, whatever. So yeah, the pricing has been really crazy the last um, year or so. So anyways, uh, found an amazing deal um, as far as the manifesting of it. Uh, so previously, I was like, well, I don't exactly know where the money's going to come from. <laughs> uh, I had some ideas, but all of a sudden, I just started getting clients coming to me, um, business ideas that I was sort of uh, moving along with, getting momentum with, and money just like coming in. And uh, I basically sold one of my bikes. The guy paid me like 90% of what I was asking for. He's going to pick up that bike next week and pay me the balance. So that one um, is pretty much done. And, uh, yeah, I might be, um, taking a little trip to go get this other bike. Um, I am just waiting to hear back from the dealership about the details basically. Um, but yeah, I'm going to buy it cash and it's going to be mine. And yeah, like, here's the thing. Some people would look at a situation and be like, you know, if something changed, like if this bike sale didn't happen if I didn't get it or you know something fell through whatever they say oh man you know that sucks or whatever and I don't look at situations like that because I always think there's something better out there you know if you ever encounter a situation where you're like oh this this specific thing is mine you know this specific motorcycle this specific house this specific boyfriend girlfriend husband wife whatever is mine and, and it doesn't happen. Um, you can be disappointed. You can be like, oh, this sucks. You know, I thought I was going to get this and it didn't happen. Keep in mind that if you maintain the attitude of the universe, God has something better in store for me, then it works out, you know? So like, I never really worry anymore about something working out. I hold to the vision of what I want and I mentioned in the last video that when I think about my manifestation is done, I'm picturing this specific motorcycle in my carport, parked, <laughs> like seeing it, like that draws you back to your manifestation, to, to like the picture of what you want. As I mentioned before, there's some pictures you can have of what you want, but it might not be the specific image that will really hone it in for you that it's already done because to me if i have the bike already that's the picture uh it's a kawasaki ninja zx14 roger uh 2017 and that's the picture like that's what i hold on to um if anything happened you know uh like it seemed kind of like the guy that was gonna buy my bike he like pushed it back a day um he came to look at it and then he said i'll have the money tomorrow push it back a day you know, some people would be like, oh, that's so annoying. You know, I need the money now or I got to go get this other bike. Or whatever. I was like, no, it's cool. You know, no problem. I'll be here. And 
you know, even with him still owing me a little bit of money, you know, I still have the bike, so it's not like I'm worried. But, you know, I'm just like, well, whatever. You know, the money will be there when I need it. I don't freak out. <laughs> um, so I've learned to not ever be too attached to the situation. Because if you're too attached, some people call it obsession, to a certain outcome, a certain specific way, it can't be any other way, very rigid, then you often end up very disappointed. Uh, but if you leave things open, like for example, there was another bike I was looking at last week and I had been messaging the dealership and they said, um, oh, um, there's a guy coming in with a deposit <laughs> uh, for that bike and he just got approved for financing. So it kind of sounded like they were about to do a deal. And I was like, okay, you know, and I could have been like, dang, you know, I missed it. I wish I was there in person. Um, this bike was like in Pennsylvania and, um, I was like, oh, okay. And I just told the lady, I said, you know, keep me posted. I said, uh, you know, if the bike doesn't sell, I'm interested. And she said, okay. And she marked the listing as like pending and it sat there for like a day. And I was like, you know, did the guy buy the bike or, you know, she's like, oh, he's supposed to come pick it up Wednesday. So for example, I could have been like, dang, you know, I missed out. I wish I lived closer or whatever. I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll find a bike that's a little newer. Maybe I'll find a bike that's uh, a little less mileage. Because that one had, like, I think 16,000 miles, which is a little a little on the higher end for bikes. It just depends how well they've been taken care of, too. So, at any rate, um, you know, had I looked at that situation and said, oh, this sucks, you know, I had my bike and then I didn't, um, I probably wouldn't have found this other bike which is a better deal, um, about the same price, but less miles and newer. So that's what I'm going for. And like I said, I'm just waiting for the guy to give me a call. I think, you know, I'm not sure if he's at the dealership on Saturdays. So it's kind of like text back and forth kind of thing, but it's like, whatever, you know, I can already see the bike, like in my carport parked. There it is. It's mine. Right. Title in hand, whatever. Um, I'm not worried about it. So another thing I was going to talk about with this whole thing of like focusing on a specific thing, like manifesting what you want and how to bring it faster. Um, I've noticed personally that if I just think about, oh, I want to make more money or, um, I want to manifest certain amount per month, certain amount per year, whatever it's, it's more like challenging to get really um a deep burning desire for that because as i talked about before it's you're going after paper right <laughs> it's the things that you want to buy to do with the money so for me personally i feel like i have to have a an item <laughs> a idea a plan that really inspires me in order to gain momentum, to build the desire, to bring things to me very quickly. Um, that's just me personally. Anytime I've gone after something big, the money showed up faster than ever before. If I believed that it would, you know, if I've just believed in having the thing, having the house, having the car, whatever it was, I all of a sudden like just took money out of the equation. I knew I needed money, but I took it out of the equation as something that would hold me back. And if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, I posted a quote. I not I don't I didn't hear this once today. I heard this twice today. Okay, but I posted the one um, from Bob Proctor and he said never lower your standards to meet your income. You raise your income to meet your standards. And I was like Gosh, that's so like what it's about, you know, like it's, you see things that you desire, right? And you're like, oh, I don't have the money. <laughs> oh, look, there's a new Corvette. Oh, but I don't have the money for that. I'll never have the money for that, you know. Never say that stuff because the desire is in you for a reason. I've seen in my own life that every time I went after something big, my income level changed. I, the first 
thing I can really think of um, with that was when I wanted um, a Hummer H2 and I was still working a day job. I wasn't even an entrepreneur yet. And I said, you know, I'm going to quit my job. And I said, well, you know what? Um, yeah, thanks, Roger. I, what would be, you know, a cool vehicle to have? Like, what's my dream vehicle, you know? Because up to that time, I really wasn't interested. I mean, I've always been interested in cars, but I wasn't interested in something cool for me to drive because I had a company car. So I wasn't really like, ooh, cars, you know, because <laughs> I had a vehicle that I didn't have to worry about, you know, company vehicle. So I said, all right, I want a Hummer H2. And I just thought, oh, that'd be cool, you know, and it's big and it's, I don't know, commanding of the road. And from the time I made the decision to the time I got the Hummer was only four months. I didn't know how I was going to get it. I didn't know where the money was going to come from, but I got it. And with that vehicle, I started to make more money. I was like, all right, cool. I mean, my income like shot up. I quit my job in that same time frame, four months, quit my job, started making like double what I was making at my job. And then I had some just crazy months just through the roof. And you know, looking back now, I'm like, I bet that that inspired me because I, I always am like hungry to <laughs> not so much like I'm focused on debt, but I'm always like hungry to, um, pay what I owe, like to be even, you know, I'm good. Everybody's good. Right. And I think that there was a desire in me to want to pay the Hummer off, like as soon as possible, uh, which I can't even remember. I think I paid it off in like under a year, under a year. Um, but anyways, that was the first thing I can think of that really something big I went after that inspired me to make more money. The other thing was when I bought my 2014 Dodge Ram, which was not your typical truck. It was a big lifted truck. I still have it. Um, it's got 24 inch wheels on it, chrome, um, big old mud looking tires blacked out <laughs> i mean it looks like a show truck i've i've driven it to shows just to go see like car shows and they're like oh do you want to enter and i'm like no nah, i'm good but <laughs> that, it's that kind of truck so anyway that truck when i bought it i was like well shoot i would see it parked outside and i would be like back to work like it was inspiring for me to again want to pay it off and it took me to another level of income during that time, you know, when I was working to pay it off. And then the money just came. Like, I think I only had a loan on that thing for like six months. May, June, July. Yeah, six months. And it was paid for. And, you know, looking back, I'm like, who would think? Because I, I think my loan was like 15 grand or something like that that I owed on it. I had a trade in as well. And, you know, it was just kind of like crazy how things come together for you. You know, if you're just like focus on what you want and then you see that your desires can open the doors for more money to come to you, not just for the desire, but it kind of tells your brain that, hey, I'm deserving. I should get something new or newer. I should get what I want. You start to treat yourself better. You start to treat yourself differently. Like, yeah, I deserve this. I am worthy of this thing. Right. Whereas before, maybe if you're, if you ever like me, you would look at other people and say, Oh, that's cool. You know, they got a nice BMW, they got a nice Mercedes. Good for them. But, ah, oh, that's too much for me. You know, like, like I didn't need a truck. My husband already has a truck. I certainly didn't need something that was lifted six inches with giant rims and tires. There was no need for it. <laughs> and I think that's the thing that often holds people back about going after what they really want. They're like, but oh, I just don't need it. I don't have a practical use for this. You know, it's like, who cares? Do you want it? Yes. Okay. That's all that matters. Um, and same thing with the bike. I already have a bike. I also have a dirt bike. Do I need a second street bike? No. Do I want it? Yes. 
that's all that matters. <laughs> and some people are, you know, then like, well, yeah, I want it, but you know, it costs this. And I really, I shouldn't spend that kind of money. And you know, da, da, da. the money is, um, what's the word? <laughs> it, it shouldn't be the factor that decides the thing. Okay. Like you said, with the quote I mentioned from Bob Proctor, you know, you don't lower your standards to meet your income. You meet, you raise your income to meet your standards. So Tony Robbins is famous for saying this too. Um, I don't know if you can see his book is way in the corner over there. Awaken a giant within. He talks about raising your level of standards. And a lot of people go through life thinking I'm a victim. I'm not worthy of just, you know, I, I shouldn't want too much. You know, I've got a house, I've got a car, got a little bit of money in the bank. I'm good. I, you know, I don't, I don't need anything more. Right. But when you raise your standards, when you raise how you think about yourself, that's when you can step into something different and you can step into something uh that's on a different level like i said i and i know that when i get this bike physically that it will again push me into another level in fact i told myself because every time i tell myself this it, it works out that if i want something and maybe there's something about it that you know, like it's a certain amount of money or something. I will tell myself somehow, some way, this thing that I want is going to make me money. Yeah, I think I shared in the last video of um, the story of the guy who drove his pickup truck through our fence in our front yard. And I said, through this situation, I am going to come out on top because it was kind of frustrating. And I was like, but I can control what happens around me. I can control my thoughts. I can control what I manifest. And I said, I'm going to make this situation turn out for my good. Sure enough, my husband did the work to fix the fence and we saved a bunch of money and we ended up making money off of that. Like he had to work hard, <laughs> but we ended up with, you know, money we didn't know we were going to have. So, you know, as I look at this, I don't know exactly how, but I'm like, you know, buy this next motorcycle and it's going to make me money. I don't know how yet, but that's the decision I made. So sure enough, because this has always happened that if I make the decision and I tell myself something and I stand behind it, it happens. <laughs> how exactly? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know we were going to get like a big insurance check with the fence situation. I don't know how it's going to work out with the bike situation. Who knows? Maybe I, um, you know, like I'm probably going to be traveling out of state to go with this bike and I'm just throwing wild scenarios out here. Maybe, you know, I need somebody, uh, on the road who's like, Hey, check out this business opportunity, you know, like whatever. I don't know. Um, maybe I get inspiration like as I'm driving, because a lot of times my best ideas will come when I'm driving. When I used to work for a day job, I did a lot of driving and I listened to a lot of, um, podcasts, business podcasts and, you know, mindset stuff and personal development books, audio, you know, stuff like that. And I would get so many ideas for my business and very profitable. You know, any idea that I would get, I would implement. It may or may not work, but most of the time it did. So again, I don't know how the bike's going to make me money, but it's going to make me money. <laughs> It's going to make me well more than, you know, what I'm paying for it. And then some. And who knows? Maybe I can find a way to make it recurring. <laughs> I don't know. But that's my decision. So that's the update. Keep you posted. Um, you know, maybe I'll even try to go live uh, when I get to the bike in person. Whatever day that might be. Um, but I'll let you know. Keep you posted on the updates. If... This is the kind of stuff that you want to happen in your life where you're like, man, I just, I feel good. I think about what I want and my, you know, my businesses are just profiting. Uh, I'm looking for four clients to help them break their income ceiling because that's what I'm doing. And I've been doing it for several years as an entrepreneur. And whenever I feel stuck, you know, I'll work on me and I, see things, I see opportunities and I gain momentum and I get on that and I get on track. And so I've begun to teach other people, you know, first start through these videos, 
But now I'm beginning to work with people one on one. So if that's something that interests you and you want to work with me, check out the link below or just uh, book a free call and we'll, we'll talk more. But um, yeah, I will see you on the next video. Peace out. What's up, beautiful people? It's Amy Nicholas, and we are back with episode three of Watch Me Manifest a New Motorcycle. I have posted, if you're in my Facebook group, Miracle Manifestations, I posted I was going to do an update. Sorry for, like, no notice. Um, I've just been <laughs> wanting to do this video, and the weather has just been, like, ridiculous. Um, it's, I picked, uh, <laughs> well, let me, let me just show you. This will be easier. Uh <laughs> I just trailered this puppy back from Missouri to Florida. I did this like in a day, by the way, the driving. Um, I stayed in oh, Illinois one night and I um, drove back from Illinois to Florida in a day. Um, so that was fun. But anyways, I wanted to kind of give you all the story. Um, where I got some signal. So I honestly, when I created this series, I, I didn't know it was going to happen so fast. Um, which is kind of the cool thing about manifestation stuff is that uh, you just never know. Like, you don't know how it's going to work exactly. There's, uh, there's certain things that fall into place. And I was like, well, let me share with people like a specific example you know of how this works and i'm taking to my office here how this works you know like how do you manifest like stuff that you really want in your life and i was like well what am i working on so i was like wanting a new motorcycle i already have a dirt bike and i have um, another motorcycle and i just sold well i had three things at one point i just sold one of them and that all like fell into place the sale timing and just everything, you know, working out finances, like just showing up, just clients calling me and like coming to me for stuff. And, um, which is pretty cool, by the way, I've got this three spots left. Um, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with people to break your income ceiling. Uh, so basically within 90 days, I'm going to show you how you can skyrocket past where you're at. Cause a lot of entrepreneurs, they get to a place where it's like, you know, they're comfortable. They're making a certain amount of money every month. Okay. Yeah. But you can like never scale, you know, past that point. It's kind of annoying as an entrepreneur. <laughs> I don't know if you ever feel like that. You're like, oh my gosh, I need to make more money. And I'm making the same amount every single month. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. If you're interested in that, you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me. Like I said, I got three spots left. Um, just shoot me a private message on Facebook. So anyways, with this series, my goal was to show you like what I was thinking about, what I was doing, how I was like getting things to work um, in terms of like, <laughs> and every manifestation is a little different. It's not like there's one specific formula for everybody. Um, that would be like way too easy. Sorry, I got water on my phone. Um, but, you know, the way things worked out with all this, I'm going to sit in my chair here. I don't know why I'm standing. I can be cozy in my office chair. Uh, this was one of my manifestations too. <laughs> so there was a couple of components here. Number one, I got very specific on what I wanted. I said, this is the bike I want. This is approximately the year range I wanted. It has the same motor from um, 2012 to 2021. And so I kind of had picked an age range of what I wanted. I said, it's got to have around this kind of mileage, this color, this exhaust, Da, da 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 like and lowered and like just specifics and so i went to work like you know and the work is like the is not what people think like the work is getting clear on what you want that's work because a lot of people are just like oh you know i think i won't make more money and that would be cool and it's like but what are you gonna do with the money like what is that for um when you give money a specific purpose like for me I obviously knew it takes money to buy a motorcycle. So I was like, how, you know, like, what can I do in my business? You know, what opportunities are available to me that I'm not even like seeing and just kind of like opening myself to new ideas, new um, things that I might be overlooking. And the cool thing about 
all this stuff is that a lot of times when you desire something, you don't know how it's going to come. Things fall into place for you when you're very specific. You know what you want and you're like, I'm going to get it. That's it, period. Like I, <laughs> when I created the video series of Watch Me Manifest a New Motorcycle, I didn't for once think that I wasn't going to get it. Now, I didn't know when it was going to come. That was the key. You won't know. It's different for every situation, every person, because you have to get in line with being clear, knowing what you want. And basically the way that textbooks explain it, and I say that because it's not really something that most people understand, is when you're on the vibration of what you desire, okay? Um, <laughs> that seems so kind of esoteric, so like out there, you know, woo woo. Um, that I don't even really like to say it that way. I would say, because I remember how I was feeling the days leading up to me getting this new motorcycle, that I felt like I already had it. And I, I used the experiences of having gotten other things in my life, cars, other motorcycles, um, other things that had just worked out for me. I used those experiences to recreate this manifestation. And I remember, focusing on the image, which for me was, and I talked to you about this on the other episodes, was having an image in my head of what would it be like, you know, when I had this bike. So I pictured coming into my carport where I have my other bikes and seeing this bike there and seeing the other bike that I didn't want anymore gone. Like the one that was older, it was just like, I was fixing it a lot and stuff that was gone. And I literally replaced its spot in the carport with this new bike. And I told a friend that like literally there was a day where I walked into the carport from outside and I was about to go in the house and I like did a double take. I literally thought I saw the bike there because I had convinced myself so much in my mind that I already owned this bike. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, it's coming. Like, you know what I mean? That was one of the signs for me. Um, yeah, give this video a like, guys. Thank you. Uh, one of the signs for me was that, oh my goodness, like stuff is happening. Like I'm literally like seeing things that aren't there yet, but they're there. You know what I mean? That's how you have to be with what you want. If you want more money, if you want a certain car, if you want a certain home, if you want a certain person in your life, act like, and again, this is how, this is how a lot of people say it. It's really not the most clear definition. I, you know, instead of saying like, act like you have this thing or whatever, I would say, what does it feel like after you have it? Like right after you get it. Because in my mind, if I already had the bike, I would be walking out into the carport and I would see it because it's after I have it. And I was like picturing just it being part of my collection, you know, it wasn't you don't want to make it like this big thing, like, oh my gosh, and like running outside, like, oh my gosh, there's the butt, you know, and then you're just acting like a nut. That's not how it was. It Because if you think about it, the things that have come to you in your life, if you go back and you think about how you were acting after you got it, you're like, oh, cool. All right. What's next? You're like already moved on to the next thing, right? That's how most people are. Um, I know for me, I have to be constantly setting new goals, new things I want to manifest, you know, my, um, my, my goal list or whatever, you know, things that I want just keeps changing and expanding and all that. It's never like you get the thing and then you're like, Oh, my life is perfect. It's, it's not. Okay. And the other thing I want to say about this whole experience, and like I said, I wish almost, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I thought it was going to be more episodes than three <laughs> before I got the bike, but I, um, I wanted to say that when I thought about this new bike, I just, I didn't think of it as a, oh, cool. It'd be nice to have this new other motorcycle. Like that's just, that was like a part of it. But the cool thing in my mind was like, what does this make of me as a person? Like being able to pick what I want and bring it to me. And then how can I use it to help other people do what I did? 
And so that's kind of why I started the series because I was like, people can follow along, they can see what I'm talking about and listening, you know, to what I'm saying. And they can physically see the manifestation. Like I just showed you the bike. Um, if you missed that, it was in the very beginning. Um, and just being able to tangibly show people this is possible, you know? And so when you when you have a goal, when you have a desire, you have to think a little bit beyond the material thing or whatever it is that that's making you want it and think a little bit deeper than that and say, why? Why do I want this? And when I thought about the bike, it was like, okay, yeah, I love the bike. It's powerful. It's fast. It's cool looking. But that's not really why I wanted it. When I got really clear and I asked myself a couple of times, I said, you know, why do I want to spike so much? What is it that's causing me to like, like do more stuff and, and work at this and like, like just visualize it intensely, like obsessively. And I said, it makes me feel good about myself. I was like, huh. You know, like who would have thunk that's why I wanted to buy a bike. Because to me, being able to manifest this thing and being able to share it with other people and help them get what they want in life made me feel good about myself. And I swear, the, the, when I got to that conclusion, things happened so fast. I went from, you know, messaging some people about these bikes to finding one with an incredible deal. I mean, I saved by driving out to Missouri to get this bike. I saved somewhere in the neighborhood of three to $4,000. And it was worth it to me, you know, maybe not to some people, but it was to me, you know, I paid cash for it. I was, you know, like, I'm going to go get this bike. And the time I found the bike was Friday. Messaged the guy, he, or actually I called because it was a dealership a small dealership. And I called and he answered and he, he told me later, he was like, you were the first person to call me on this bike. He said, I just posted it 30 minutes ago. I saw it on Facebook marketplace. I was like, Oh my gosh, let me call, you know, cause this looks like a deal. Called the guy. He said, um, told me about the bike. It was like his father-in-law's, um, he was selling it for him. He knew all the stuff that had been done to it. It had all the features I wanted. <laughs> like the bike was already, uh, lowered, down two inches which is exactly the perfect height for me to touch the ground properly and it had the full system exhaust headers um the ecu had been flashed if you're not familiar with bikes basically they remove all the restrictions that the kawasaki um puts on the bike when they put it out cars they do this on cars too by the way uh so yeah all this stuff had been done to me it was like oh my gosh this this bike was waiting for me you know and he just put it up for sale and i said let me um I said, let me figure out, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to call you back uh, tomorrow. We, we said, let's talk Saturday, get more details. I knew I was going to have the money. I didn't know exactly like from what, where, when, whatever, but things all fell into place. I got the cash. I said, I'm heading out Sunday. <laughs> Went and got a U-Haul trailer Sunday morning and I left the middle of the day Sunday and booked it uh, west <laughs> to Missouri. And so yeah, I got to Missouri Monday afternoon and um, had to pick up a tire for the bike. But the guy was like, I'll, you know, I'll cover you for the tire. Just, you know, go pick it up because it needed a, a new rear tire. Um, so anyways, yeah, pay for the bike Monday afternoon, loaded up on the trailer, headed out and stayed the night um, in Illinois. And then yesterday I left Illinois and I drove all the way to Florida. That's over a thousand miles, guys. <laughs> Went over a thousand miles each way to go get this bike. So sometimes when there's a thing that you want, you have to be willing to do the work that's required. Okay. Now, if there's something that you really want and you don't understand the mechanics, maybe you understand like the books that teach you, oh, just think about what you want and focus on it. And, um, you know, it'll come and don't worry and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but this is not working for you. Send me a message. I'm going to tell you more about my break your income ceiling coaching because I can show you how to bring more money into your life to get the things that you want. Okay. Cause it's always about, it's not the money. It's the lifestyle after that. Right. I look at this bike and I say, Amy, I told myself this. I said, Amy, you will become a different person because of this happening. It's not about the bike. 
It's about the freaking journey on the way to becoming the person you have to become in order to get the stuff. Okay. So again, that brings us back to, it's not about the stuff. It's about what do you really want? Get clear. Why do I want this? Don't focus on how am I going to get it? Like with this motorcycle, I wasn't like, how am I going to get it? Oh my gosh. Like, uh, I got to figure things out. Well, I got to pay for this and I got to pay for that. And I got to pay for insurance and I got da, 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 da. That was like planned like later when I already knew I was going to get the bike. I was not worried about that like way before. I wasn't like, where's the money going to come from? Oh my gosh. Like I got to figure this out. And you know, how am I going to do this and how am I going to go get it? And, and you know, when you get into the how you bring up doubt and doubt is the goal killer. Because if you have any element of doubt in you that you're not going to get what you want, and it could just be like a little, little sinking feeling in the back of your mind, you know, that will kill it. You will not get what you want because it's enough to destroy your dream. Napoleon Hill talks about it in <laughs> somewhere over here. I have think and grow rich. Wait, is it this show? There it is. Okay. Yeah. It's like, anyways, I have like all the Napoleon Hill's books. Um, he talks about that even just a little inkling of doubt can kill what you desire, which sucks because you're like, well, shoot, uh, you know, there is a little bit of doubt in me. Right. So what do you do to shift that? How do you get away from thinking about the doubt or having it even in your mind anywhere? You must focus on the why, why do I want this? Why? And go deeper than just the surface level reason. Like I said, go deeper beyond the whole, you know, oh, I like this because blah, blah, blah. And it's like exterior things. You know, I like how it looks. I like how it feels, whatever. Go deeper and figure out why you really want it. Like I said, with the bike, I got to the root cause and the root feeling of why do I want this bike? Cause it's going to make me feel good about myself. And that like made me just like, Oh my gosh, the belief like shot through the roof at that point. I was like, oh, it is done. Like this bike is already mine. It's already out there. It's already parked. I already went and got it, whatever. Like it was done before I even left the house to go get it. So I hope this series, you know, if you missed any of the episodes, go back and watch. You can follow on uh, YouTube. I'm just under Amy Nicholas on YouTube. Go back and rewatch it and see and listen to what I'm talking about. And how things came together for me. Like I said, I didn't know. I thought it was going to be more than three episodes, to be honest. I didn't think it was going to be, um, you know, bam, bam, bam. But it's kind of cool. I mean, I'm glad that I documented it. Because on episode one, I didn't know. what You know, I was like, I want this certain bike. I didn't know where the bike was. I hadn't picked it out yet. Episode two, I kind of was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I think I found one. And, you know, I'm going to talk to the guy later, you know. But, again, you can listen through and, and watch my story. If you want results like this, and I wish I could just tell everybody, yeah, you know, bam, 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 it's going to happen that fast. But I can show you some shortcuts, you know. So if you're in a place, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, and you're like, Amy, I'm stuck. I, I can't get past a certain level. I want to because I want these other things. I want to support, um, you know, my spouse, my partner, my family. I want to be able to take nice trips. I want to be able to just go to the store and buy something cash. I mean, I went and bought this by cash and I don't say that to brag or boast or anything, but just to show you that if you decide in your head that this is what I will do, you'll find a way to do it. Cause I thought about it and I was like, well, I have a, um, a loan on my other bike and I kind of bought it because the, my older bike was breaking down the one I sold. So I went to the dealership really with no intention to buy. And I was just sold on the fact that I could get something brand new no problems, no issues. And, you know, I could just ride it and, and I would know exactly everything that had been done to it. Right. So that's why I bought that bike and I put it on a loan. And I, I, I was like, whatever, you know, it's cool. This time around, I said, you know what? I could finance it if I wanted to, like I have excellent credit. It would be no problem. Um, but I was like, you know, I said, it just, it would just feel really good to pay for it cash. And just be able to say that, you know, and so that it became my decision. 
And I was like, I'll just I'll figure it out. I'll make it happen, you know? <laughs> and if the, if that all sounds like stuff you're interested in, you want to learn how to, you know, break your income ceiling, by the way, um, I'm doing it this month myself. <laughs> I'm teaching other people to do it and I'm looking at my own numbers. Um, well, I should say for August and I'm like, I think it just, I think it just went over my own ceiling, you know? Um, but anyways, if you're interested in that, just shoot me a message on Facebook privately and, um, I'll tell you some more about the coaching, but basically within 90 days, I'll get you from where you are to go past your income ceiling. You know, maybe you're making like 5,000 a month. You're like, man, I can't really get past this. You know, maybe you want to make seven, eight, ten. Whatever it is that you decide, you know, I'm going to help you get past that. And I'm only looking for three more people. I've, I've got um, some spots filled. So just let me know if you're interested. Shoot me a message on Facebook and I'll see you on the next video. Let me know how you enjoyed this series too. Comment below. Take care. Of Money Mindset Secrets. I can now create the playlist on YouTube because I have more than one video to put in there after this live stream. So I will uh, save that as a playlist. So be sure to subscribe on YouTube, uh, follow me, click the notification bell, all that good stuff. And you can watch all the episodes as I record and put them in the playlist. I know not everybody can make them live, but try if you can. It's always fun. So today we're talking by request uh, from my Facebook group miracle manifestations um i'm sorry i didn't put a link in the video but if you go on facebook and just type in miracle manifestations we've got like a pink background um, be sure to join our free facebook group and that's where i've been asking what people want to watch so by request we are talking journaling secrets today and i'm gonna share with you a technique that has worked for me in the past to manifest um dream home dream truck dream motorcycle, dream um, money, like a bunch of things. And I'm also going to share with you a new technique that I've been using to manifest um, different things. Uh, money specifically has been kind of more the focus, but other things as well. So getting into it. First of all, let me say that there is no one way to do journaling. It can vary based on what's fun for you, what you like to do. And if it ever feels tedious or like it's a chore, then skip it because it's not helping you. It's probably hurting your manifestations, okay? So I used to um, whip out my journal every morning and I learned a technique from a mentor that it was best to write out your dream life as if you were actively living it. So I live here, I have this house, it has this many rooms, um, I drive this vehicle, I have this amount in the bank, that kind of thing. And I got to a point, um, I, it worked for me, by the way. Um, I, you know, could see from my past journals that, you know, yeah, I got this, I got that. And there, but there were times where I didn't want to do that every single day. Um, I just, you know, I was like, man, I, I know it's helpful and it's positive, but I don't want to write out this dream life thing every single day. So I'll share with you in another video how I kind of converted that process into something more simple and easy for me to follow disciplined, that sort of thing, um, instead of writing it. Um, writing is still very powerful. I still write um, goals and things down and I'll share with you exactly how I'm doing my journaling in a sec. But yeah, so that was my process before. And I got to a point where I was just sort of not feeling like wanting to do it. And I knew that something had to change there because I was like, mm, I should feel like I want to do this, you know, and if I don't feel like I want to, then it's probably not helping me to force myself to do it. That's kind of how I felt. So I stopped and I said, let me just take a step back. And, you know, I kind of just from reading different things, just from doing different things, I got into this mindset of, let's see if I got, yeah, I kind of went like old school and I just got like a simple notebook looking journal thing. And I now daily have been writing out what I call intentions. So instead of writing out this huge dream life kind of script, 
that's very involved <laughs> encompasses, you know, everything that I want in my life. Um, or even just writing out like a perfect day or something. I have just literally, I started out, let me see if I can go back here a couple weeks. I started out putting the date, whatever today is. And then, let me see, could I change it up? I think I put like today I will. And then I had like dot, 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 you know, like bullet points or, or check boxes. And I realized by saying today I will that it was like, okay, this isn't done yet. And I didn't like that sort of thought in my mind that, you know, it was just like a checklist of things. And so I changed it to just today I, and then I have the things down there, the intentions. Okay. So some of the intentions I have are just like, do something fun today. You know, things that are like easily attainable, achievable, that will support your beliefs in a very easy, natural way. You know, you don't have to write things down like today I, I made a hundred thousand dollars, you know, or something crazy. Um, I would say put the things down that you maybe are they're out of reach. Like you, you're like, well, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this just yet, but this is my intention. This is what I desire for today. Just put it down. Um, I'll write like five or six things. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Like five or six things. And some of them are just simple things like, Hey, send an email to so-and-so, <laughs> um, get a new client for X, you know, um, by the way, I do work one-on-one -on -one with people teaching this stuff. So if you are wanting to break your income ceiling, you're feeling stuck as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, reach out to me, you can book a free call with me. I'll share more about working one-on-one. -on -one. I will get you through that income ceiling within 90 days, guaranteed. Um, so back to the list. I like one of my things that I just put work on my skill sets, you know, um, and I wrote a few things down related to that. But in terms of money, I have been putting, I earned, like past tense, I earned X amount of dollars. So like today I, da, 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 one of them is going to say earned blank money, whatever I decide that day I, I'm going to earn. And that is the key. If you are actively like going after money, like that's your big goal right now. I need more money, right? Um, make sure to write it down daily, the amount you want to bring in that day. I have in the past manifested like monthly goals, but sometimes they seem kind of like out there. You know, when you think of like, oh, 30 days or 31 days worth of <laughs> income, it's kind of overwhelming, especially if say, you know, you're making like $2,000 a month and you're like, I want to make 10,000 a month. Like it seems overwhelming. So focus on the day to day. This has been working very well for me because it takes the stress off of like, oh my gosh, okay, that's today. I got to earn this today. I got to earn this tomorrow. And then I got the whole month. I got to do this over and over and over again. No, just focus on today, write your intentions and put your intention of, I earned X amount of money. Okay. So this is kind of like a different way of journaling, but I'm telling you it's effective if you want something quick and easy, simple. <laughs> Why does this work? Because, because by the way, many of the days that I have written down, I earned dollar amount, I did it. Okay. And some of the days I, you know, I started out at zero, earning zero dollars, right? By the end of the day, I had earned what I said in my notebook or more sometimes. So just by being decisive and saying this, not only like this, I will do, but this I did is the key here because I liked the journaling thing. I liked writing out my dream life some of the time, but a lot of the times you have to really put yourself in a position in your mind that it's already done. And when you're writing out a million things, about your dream life, it's kind of overwhelming to really believe that all oh, that's done, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I've got my, my dream home on the beach and I've got multi millions in the bank and you know, all this stuff. Focusing on 
these things on a daily basis kind of just sets the focus of your day. And I, I feel like it's helped me to become more clear and not put this like huge checklist of things to do today. Cause that's just kind of a waste of time. Stay away from checklists um, in that sense. But yeah, writing it down today, I, dot, 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 I have about five or six things. And again, some of them are just like simple things. Like I ate healthy and light. <laughs> because I know that ultimately everything is supporting my income goal. You know, um, today I want $100,000, $2,000, whatever it is. I know that everything else that I write down around that is supporting it, if that makes sense. Um, even saying like, you know, I'll have fun today. Because if I take things too seriously, it's demotivating and it's harder to um, manifest the money when you're stressed, when you're not having fun, right? Uh, just kind of looking back through some of my my days here. Um, you know, and sort of, you could call them intentions or you could call them outcomes, whatever you like. But I've even said things about like something that I've got scheduled for that day. I will, um, you know, script out that it went well and this outcome happened, that kind of thing. Okay, again, always talking in past tense because I, I think this is, I'm gonna point the finger at some gurus. <laughs> I'm pointing the finger at some of these success personal development gurus. They will tell you that the key to success is that you must live as if your goals are happening, right? These are the success gurus. Oh, just you know, act as if, write your goals in the present tense. Like I have blah, 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 right? No, wrong. Because it's oftentimes too lofty, too out there for us to kind of like believe that this is happening right now. However, if you find ways to kind of trick your brain into believing that something has happened past tense, then you can believe that. You could say, yeah, I have this experience. It's already happened. I already earned this money. Like today I earned 2000 bucks, whatever. It's already done. Hey, Michelle, what's going on? So talking in your, you know, in your scripting and your journaling and writing in the past tense instead of the present. Of course, you don't want to write the future tense because that puts it away from you. That's like, it's, it's always in the future, right? Present tense is not as tangible as these success gurus try to make it seem. Um, it is, <laughs> you know, because think about it this way. Like if you're writing out, you know, this is my dream life and I have this and I have that and then da 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 you, you have to conjure up all these feelings of this is all happening right now, right this minute, right? But it's easier I believe, and I don't know if there's some sort of scientific evidence behind this, but it is easier to believe that something has happened to you in the past and you could act like you're telling a friend. You know, if you don't like the method I shared about today, I and I write down the things that I have already done, even though I really haven't, um, you could write it out like a letter to a friend. You could be like, hey, um, Sally, how you doing? Guess what happened to me? Like two weeks ago, I got my dream car. Um, I moved to Vegas. I, I'm just totally like throwing stuff out here. Um, I have a, you know, a new business. Everything is cooking. <laughs> like whatever, you know, whatever works for you. Because the key here, whether you use the techniques I shared with you or not, is that you are feeling the goal manifested not coming, not manifesting, already done. It is done. It's a powerful book, by the way. If you go on um, Amazon Kindle, I don't think it's on paperback, but there's a book called It Is Done by Richard Dots. Check it out. I'm not affiliated or anything, but it's a really good book. Uh, so if these tips are helpful for you, please like please subscribe, follow, because I'm going to keep doing these episodes. This is only episode two of Money Mindset Secrets. If you missed it, go back, rewatch it. I'm going to put these in a playlist as well. 
if you're an entrepreneur and you are struggling in your online business, you are capped. Your income is just stuck. You're not moving forward. Maybe you're moving backwards. Maybe you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't make any headway. You're struggling to make the ends meet. There's more month <laughs> than money. Uh, been there, done that, by the way. If that is you and you're looking to break that income ceiling, reach out to me. You can message me on Facebook. You can book a free call with me down below. Um, I'll share with you a way that I can help you break your income ceiling in 90 days, guaranteed, leading you to new life, new abundance, new opportunities for you, and maybe even a new business. I'm working with a client right now. She's considering some new options. Um, but yeah, you just never know. But I think sometimes having that outside perspective of somebody able to, who's been where you've been, who struggled where you've struggled, who, uh, go back and rewatch my video um, when it all went wrong, by the way, if you haven't seen that. And you can learn more about my struggles as an entrepreneur. And uh, yeah, book a free call with me. Learn more about breaking your income ceiling and I will catch you on the next episode. Take care.